you know, the fourth, the fourth area uh, that Eagle Consultants uh, should be looking at with businesses is infrastructure and construction. Uh, infrastructure and construction have a massively outweighed impact. Uh, remember before how I told you that businesses actually, uh, in, in terms of, of buildings that people live in and work in, those uh, have a larger environmental impact than the cars that we use in the transportation sector uh, as a whole uh, for energy uh, consumption and materials that are actually used. So uh, one of the big things that we uh, let our green consultants know is that, is that when they go out and they talk to businesses, find out if these businesses have any construction projects planned. Construction projects are an area of environmental concern because, hey, there's always the waste issue if they're tearing down walls. Uh, and it's also the biggest indicator that there's, that there's money to be made uh, out of an account. Construction projects mean opportunity. Uh, it's, it's, there's, there's opportunity for environmental improvement. Certainly, if you can get folks to insulate their buildings better, that's going to reduce their energy use over time, and that is important for them to lower their costs, and it's important for the environment to stop that CO2 and, and other forms of gases that are produced in order to, 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 and there's a lot that goes into it, but to stop that energy use in those buildings. Uh, you, know, you, you, talk, you ask these folks uh, in infrastructure and construction if they're going to do that because uh, if they're going to have a construction project because, hey, there might be an opportunity to change out the lighting. Uh, if you have a good LED contractor out there, a lead lighting contractor that can replace incandescence or, or fluorescence with LED, that might be a great time to do it while they're doing their other retrofitting and, and construction projects. Uh, we, we ask you to ask what the roofing materials are. Do they own the building? Is it a portable one? Because if they, if they own the building, obviously there's a lot more opportunity there for you to help. Uh, do they, you know, are they responsible for the roof? If they're renting the place, probably not. If they own the building, they probably are. And then it's a question of, well, you know, what kind of roofing materials they have? How old is the building? Um, you can get into different recommendations there uh, to say, hey, look, one thing that might be environmentally wonderful for you to do is to have a green roof on your building. Uh, and people kind of look at you and go, yeah, but how does, what does that do for me as a business owner? Well, a bunch of things, really. Uh, one, you're giving people a, well, if you do it right, you're giving people a break area that's outside that's still on your premise that they might actually want to be at. Um, that's good because people usually like to take breaks and bolt out of the office as fast as they can. Um, they want to go outside. Uh, they want to be out in the environment. So keeping them close to home is always a good thing as a business owner. Keeping your employees close to where they work is always a good thing. Uh, the other thing that you're doing is you're actually insulating your building uh, better. Those, those big, thick green roofs on top of things, uh, they deal with some of your water runoff issue. Uh, if, you, if you're responsible for your building, uh, you know, if you've got one of those areas that's persist, persistently uh, soaking up water in your parking lot, you know, standing water in your parking lot, you know that's one way that you might be able to help yourself is to cut down on the amount of water runoff. And if you're keeping a, a food supply around for, for yourself, your employees, or whatever. Um, so, not, you know, that one's just more a quality of life issue for employees. They really do love that stuff, uh, especially if they have access to a green roof. You know, spending your time in a break in a garden is a nice way to reset the mental page. And also, too, those roofs have a great way of insulating uh, from the top. But let's say you're not into that. Uh, or maybe you're in Seattle and you just get too much rain. Well, uh, maybe you ought to look at a roof-mounted uh, wind-based system like the one that, uh, that Honeywell produces. Uh, maybe you're, you're using your roof space uh, for energy. Or if you're in a particularly sunny area, uh, maybe you're putting solar panels up there. So the roof is a big question. You know, you want to find out where their water runoff walk, uh, flows to. Uh, a lot of times you want to take a look outside around that building to see if there's anything. Uh, one, one thing that uh, you really want to look out for as a green consultant is does their water runoff, is this building that they're working on, does the ground outside have a gradient that runs towards any fresh water source? Huge area of environmental impact. Water runoff from buildings contaminating fresh water sources is one of the biggest environmental impacts that businesses have, and they never 
think of it because they just assume that the builder who built the building put this all into account or that, or that the environmental, uh, the local environmental management agency took it into account. Well, guess what? They didn't. Almost always they didn't. Sometimes they did. Most of the time they didn't. Uh, so one big thing to look at is water runoff and how is a business affecting that? Because at some point, at some point in the chain, uh, businesses are affecting the quality of life of the surrounding area and their neighbors, and that can come back to bite them in very public ways. Uh, but not to sell fear about it, really just people just making the right decision to make sure where their water runoff is going to. Also, too, if companies pay for their water, uh, which a lot of people do get a water bill, uh, a cistern system uh, where it captures the water and then reuses it for things like the, you know, the flush toilets uh, is a fantastic way to reduce your water bill. Uh, so that's, a, that's, a, that's, you know, the roof, getting into the roof and water runoff issues is, is a big point. In terms of construction projects, sometimes they just have a painting project. They want to repaint some rooms. The colors are kind of drab, or they're changing the office space out, uh, whatever's going on there. Uh, that's a big question, uh, getting into what types of paints they have and what kind of volatile organic compounds are in the paints they're going to be using. So uh, good eco-consultant is going to ask around those types of questions. Any plans to repaint your rooms? What sort of flooring do you have? Uh, great opportunity for positive environmental impact and a nice, warm, uh, great feeling around the office about what's being used in terms of the carpeting that people have to stand on and work on all day. Uh, you know, does the office have carpet? Is that carpet old? Is it, do they have any plans to replace that? Think, picture these things. These are all opportunities if you're positioned with the right, uh, either products or services in-house or the right partner uh, on the outside to do to, to, Position yourself to make money by positioning somebody else's product at their doorstep. Um, so, a lot of uh, eco impact in terms of carpets out there. We make all those recommendations. That's for the other course. But how efficient are the windows? Uh, are the windows energy efficient? Remember, we're on the infrastructure and construction here. So those types of things that, uh, that people have in terms of their buildings and uh, or large equipment. So, are those windows energy efficient? Got people complaining about how cold it is, you know, things to get into there that makes a lot of sense to talk about. Uh, what about office furniture? Is the office furniture made from recycled materials or reclaimed materials? Uh, that's one of those ones that, that doubles up in terms of being able to save money or not. Uh, you know, you're looking at reclaimed or reused office furniture, which there's an absolute fantastic ton of out there. Uh, so many businesses have collapsed recently in this economic turmoil um, that office supply furniture uh, or used office supply furniture is just flooded the market um, and costs have dropped down dramatically as a result on that stuff. So um, go out and search by all means, find one of these used office supply warehouses and beat them up on price because they've got a ton of it. And if they, if they put a premium on it and try to get away with with price control in this market, with how many businesses have folded up and how many of those desks are empty now, um, they're just lying to themselves and they're lying to you. So go out and get your office furniture on the cheap. Make sure that that's one of the things that you get into. You know, are they going to add the headcount? Um, you know, why why bother going out and spending more money on this stuff? Um, you know, do they make use of solar shading in any of their rooms? Does that make sense? Do you know a vendor there where that might be able to be helpful? Um, you know, are they responsible for their own landscaping? Uh, what's going on there? Uh, and, you know, tons of, tons of stuff under that. Are the parking lots shaded? How does that save us money? What are you talking about? Why should I have trees around my parking lot? Um, you know, lots of really good questions to get into there in terms of infrastructure, construction. Uh, you know, is your copy ready to go? These are the things that, that make sense that you can get into to, to start getting into conversations that either save people money or make people money. Uh, and, and infrastructure and construction is a big, wide-open area to make money there. 